Hello, I'm Deborah Chung from University at Buffalo, the State University of New York. Uh, I'm going to share with you about electric energy sources based on electrical conductors. Um, electronic conductors are materials that are the most conductive, including metals such as steel and carbons such as graphite. The dielectric behavior involves electric polarization. Uh, that means the separation of the positive and negative charge centers in the material. And th that gives an electric dipole and thus a capacitance. And the electric permittivity is the material property uh, uh, associated with capacitance. Um, the dielectric behavior is a new chapter in the electrical behavior of electronic conductors. Uh, the, um, it has escaped attention due to the high conductivity and the consequent low electric field. John, John Shea, uh, who passed away in 2005, predicted theoretically in 1919, uh, 1999 giant polarizability in conductors. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away six years after the prediction. Uh, I made the first experimental observation of relative permittivity as high as 10 to the 6 uh, in conductors in 2019, 20 years after his prediction. Electromagnetic shielding, or EMI shielding, exploits the permittivity for the absorption of microwave radiation. Yeah. However, uh, this work involves not microwave, but DC or low frequencies, including 60 hertz. Okay. Uh, such low frequencies uh, are dominant among uh, electronics. Consider an electronic conductor. If there is uh, um, no interaction between the electrons and the atoms, then the electrons would just loop around the circuit uh, and causing no polarization, that is no separation of the positive and negative charge centers. However, if there is some interaction between the electrons and the atoms, you can have polarization, the plus and minus here. Okay. Um, uh, now the electric field that can be sustained in a conductor is small, however the electric field needed to cause the carriers in a conductor to move is also small. Now, prior work on the dielectric behavior of materials involves non-conductors, such as ceramics and polymers. Uh, and these non-conductors have essentially no carrier, no charge carrier. Uh, and so the polarization simply stems from the asymmetry in the structure, such as the asymmetry in the crystal structure or in certain uh, uh, bonds sticking out of the polymer chain. Um, now, the conductors, ceramics or polymers, require poling uh, in order to be polarized. However, the conductors, such as metals, do not require the poling. They are naturally polarized. Um, the non-conductor depoles spontaneously after the poling uh, because it w w wants to randomize, to increase the entropy. However, the conductors do, do not depole spontaneously because the pole state is stable. Um, the polarization impedes DC conduction, therefore increasing the apparent resistivity. Um, this is uh, with polarization under a DC current, so the circled plus, circled minus represent the charge, uh, negative and positive charge centers uh, resulting from the polarization. This plus and this minus without the circles indicates the applied, elect uh, applied voltage. Uh, so uh, the polarity of the, uh, uh, the di dipole due to the polarization is against conduction uh, and so it causes the resistance to appear to be high, higher than the true resistance. And so as polarization takes place, that is as the, this dipole builds up, the apparent resistance climbs up continuously. And if you suddenly uh, uh, reverse the polarity of the applied current, 
uh, then uh, this dipole becomes aiding rather than impeding the conduction. And so the apparent resistance suddenly drops from R1 to R2, and R2 is below the true resistance. Um, and the average of R1 and R2 equals the true resistance in case of electrical symmetry in the material. These are real data uh, for nickel in, in solid curve and aluminum for dashed curve. Uh, and the left here shows asymmetry as obtained naturally. Uh, um, but the right shows symmetry as obtained by short-circuiting the material for six minutes immediately before testing. Okay. So unless one does that brute force short-circuiting immediately before the testing, the material exhibits electrical asymmetry, and that's inherent, that's natural. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now the capacitance uh, is, uh, um, now the, the, the dipole now is associated with capacitance, as I said. And one can measure the capacitance, and if one plot one over the measured capacitance versus the inter-electro distance used in the capacitance measurement, one gets a straight line like this. And this indicates dipoles in series, because dipoles in series involves one over C. Okay? Uh, and from the slope of this plot, one gets the relative permittivity, which is around 10 to the 6 uh, at uh, 100 kilohertz in this case. And this material is uh, 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 tin for silver solder. Okay. Um, so indeed, the relative permittivity is very high for conductors, as predicted by Jansha back in 1999. Uh, the permittivity and the resistivity are correlated pretty well in, among the various metals. And this curve is, is for metals, various metals, including steel. Um, the higher the resistivity, the higher is the relative permittivity. Okay? And this correlation indicates that the dielectric behavior and conduction behavior are not independent of each other. Uh, however, the correlation is weak among the carbons. Uh, all these points not on the curve are for various carbons, such as graphite and carbon fiber, and they don't show very much correlation at all for the carbons. And, and that is because of the complexity of the microstructures of the various carbons. Now here shows the correlation between the relative permittivity and the fractional change in apparent resistance uh, uh, um, during DC polarization uh, at a particular time uh, and a particular current level, okay, and comparing various materials. And you can see a definite correlation. That is, the higher the relative permittivity, the more is the DC polarization. Uh, so, and that makes sense, so AC polarization as described by the relative permittivity, and the DC polarization as described by the fractional change in the apparent resistance, they jibe, they correlate. The electrode refers to a material with a permanent electric dipole. Okay? And this shows the electric field associated with an electric dipole. Uh, electric microphones have been around for decades. Uh, they, uh, it's a, a capacitor, uh, and uh, they use a polymer, such as Teflon, uh, in, in, inside the capacitor. Okay. Uh, so they have to pull the Teflon to make the electrode. Okay. Um, so electrodes are materials with permanent electric dipoles. And they have been around among non-conductors for a long time, but not among conductors. That's a new thing. Conductive electrode is the new thing. Um, for the non-conductive electrodes, the polarized state is thermodyna thermodynamically unstable because of the low entropy. 
But for the conductive electrodes, the polarized state is thermodynamically stable because of the low enthalpy. Um, as a result of that stability, uh, uh, it can undergo self-charge. That is, if you discharge it by brute force, uh, short-circuiting, and then open it, circuit it again and let it sit, it will automatically charge back. Uh, that's called self-charge, and that is feasible because the polarized state is thermodynamically stable for the conductive electrode. Okay. For the non-conductive electrode, the depolarized state is thermodynamically stable okay, and uh, because of the high entropy involved with the randomization of the di dipole orientations. And so uh, non-conductive electrodes would self-discharge. If you let it sit, it would discharge automatically until it's no longer polarized. Uh, however, the depolarized state of a conductive electrode is thermodynamically unstable. Uh, uh, in contrast to the stability of the polarized state. Battery charges, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 requires electricity input, right? It's not self-charge. Batteries cannot self-charge. You have to input electricity in order to charge a battery, okay? Uh, but a, a battery self-discharges, okay, if you let it sit uh, uh, so for some time, it, it just get, gets, uh, uh, the voltage becomes lower and lower. Um, uh, uh, and uh, the electrode in conductors is consistent with this uh, asymmetry that's natural. As I said, uh, in order to make it symmetric, you have to brute forcely uh, 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 short circuit it uh, for, say, six minutes immediately before testing. Uh, naturally is asymmetric, asymmetric, and that points to the presence of an electrode. Uh, this shows the correlation between the electric field in the electrode with the degree of asymmetry in that DC polarization curve. And note that they correlate okay, uh, um, for the metals uh, as well as for the carbons. The higher the electric field, uh, the higher the uh, asymmetry, asymmetry in that DC polarization. Uh, note that uh, the electric field, it gets much higher for the carbons than the metals because carbons have much higher resistivity than metals. Um, uh, this shows uh, the effect of the inter-electrode distance on that inherent electric field as shown for steel, low carbon steel and stainless steel. In general, uh, the electric field increases slightly, not a whole lot, but slightly with increasing inter-electrode distances for these various metals and carbons. Okay. The cross-sectional area, as opposed to the inter-electrode distance, also affects uh, the voltage or electric field. And we studied the effect of the cross-sectional area using steel uh, of the same length namely six feet long, but ten different widths. Okay. Um, and we measure the electric voltage, which we call V prime, uh, versus the uh, cross-sectional area A. Uh, and we find that uh, this voltage V prime increases with A linearly uh, when the A is small, uh, but uh, nonlinear uh, uh, when A is bigger, but still uh, keeps increasing. Okay. Um, and and uh, this means that the capacitors are not in parallel but in series. Okay? Because if the capacitors, uh, when you increase the width, uh, and you, uh, if you, uh, that increase in width is associated with more capacitors in parallel, then the voltage should not change. Okay? But the voltage indeed increases with area. That means it's not in parallel but in series. And this is uh, low carbon steel. Uh, this is uh, capacitors in parallel, capacitors in series. So uh, uh, in, in series, you have the A uh, uh, increasing, the area increase, increasing the charge, which we call Q prime, in the capacitor. Um, and, and then the in, uh, Q prime drives the voltage V prime. Okay. 
Uh, and, uh, and so the, the nonlinear behavior in high A, high area uh, a regime, is due to the decrease in the resistance with increasing A. That's why it, 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 uh, uh, the increase in the uh, voltage slows down when A is large. It's because as you have more and more area, the resistance goes down, right? <laughs> resistance is inversely related uh, to the area. Uh, and, and when the resistance is low, it's harder to support a high, high uh, inherent voltage. Uh, and, and this makes sense because the dielectric and conduction behaviors are related. The power would be V prime square over R, V prime being that inherent voltage. R is the resistance. Um, and as A, the area increases, V prime increases, as we said, but R decreases, so the numerator increases, the denominator decreases, making the power increase a lot. Okay. Um, so this shows the power versus the A, and it in increases a, a lot, you know, 50,000 <clears> percent. <throat> now, when you reverse the polarity uh, at the voltmeter, okay, the, the voltage obviously changes sign. It has to be. Uh, and here, uh, uh, V1 is uh, before the polarity reversal is positive, and this is uh, V2 that's after polarity reversal, the voltage is negative. So the, that inherent voltage that I, me I mentioned is changes sign upon polarity reversal. Um, and, and note that the V. Uh, uh, the voltage increases greatly with the interelectro distance. I mentioned that the electric field increases slightly uh, with the interelectro distance, but the voltage uh, I I increases a lot with the interelectro distance in accordance with Ohm's law. The electric field also increases with the inter interelectro distance L, but it increases only slightly. Now, uh, this uh, uh, electric with its inherent voltage or I inherent electric field upon short circuiting would get discharged so that the voltage or electric field would get gradually uh, decrease to zero. Uh, uh, that occurs upon short circuiting. Okay. However, afterward, if you open circuit it and let it sit, the voltage or electric field would be recovered. And that's self-charge. And this is the uh, results for um, graphite with one, one micron grain size. And for all of the metals and carbons, uh, the, the uh, ch discharge charge behavior looks similar. This is uh, for a metal, namely the tin for silver. Uh, see, it looks similar. Okay. But the uh, time for discharge or charge is, is shorter for the metals than the carbons because it's more conductive. Um, now this is the corresponding uh, discharge charge characteristics for low carbon steel. Um, similar look. Uh, now we can analyze the discharge charge curve by recognizing that the current, now which can be obtained from the voltage by using Ohm's law, uh, Current would decrease you know, to zero during discharge and then rise uh, uh, restored uh, upon charging afterward. And you can integrate the current versus time to get the charge, the amount of charge involved during discharge and during charge. Um, and this, the shaded area, is the electric charge uh, associated with the electric. I call that Q prime. <coughs> Here shows uh, uh, the result of that integration uh, uh, expressed in terms of the fraction of carriers that participate in the electorate. Uh, that fraction is just the uh, uh, number of carriers that participate in the electorate divided by the total number of carriers available. Um, and uh, you can see that that number is not large. It's like 10 to the minus 4. Uh, uh, particularly for high conductivity metal, it's even smaller because of the large number of uh, carriers in the denominator. 
Um, also shown here is the fraction of carriers that participate in the permittivity, that is in the AC polarization, as indicated by the capacitance measurement. Uh, and uh, it, 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 it's also a very small fraction, and that fraction is smaller than the fraction of carriers that participate in the electorate by quite a few orders of magnitude. Okay. Um, and note that if you compare the two graphites which have different grain sizes, 1 and 25, you can see that uh, the, uh, the fractions uh, 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 increase, both fractions increase with decreasing grain size. Okay. Uh, and note that the fractions are small for metals compared to the carbons because of the abundance of free electrons in the denominator for the metals. Okay. Uh, for metals, one can do code work. For carbons, we cannot. Okay. So we can uh, subject a metal to code rolling and look at the effect of the code work on that inherent electric field. And we see that it, it, uh, uh, the voltage increases with amount of prior code work. Uh, um, uh, the code work affects the microstructure. And the microstructure, in turn, affects the abundance of atom sites that, uh, where the electron-atom interaction occurs. Uh, the more abundance are those sites, the more is the extent of electron-atom interaction, and the bigger is the electrode's voltage or electric field. Uh, moreover, the positive end of the electric voltage is located where the rolling-induced plastic flow originates. This means that the electrons move along with the atoms during the plastic flow, right? another indication of electron-atom interaction. Uh, the effect of code work is shown here for metal, uh, for copper. Um, the permittivity increases. Uh, um, the resistivity increases just a little bit. Uh, the part, uh, fraction of carriers that participate in the electorate uh, uh, um, uh, increases by a couple of orders of magnitude uh, due to the code work. Okay. Now, I'd like to introduce the concept of electorate based capacitance. Uh, this is not the usual permittivity-based capacitance. Um, the uh, uh, permittivity-based capacitance, C, is Q over V, okay, well known, uh, with V driving the Q. But the electrode-based capacitance, which I call C prime, is Q prime, the electric charge, divided by V prime, the electric voltage, with Q prime driving V prime. Uh, and Q prime is determined by integration of that discharge curve. Um, it turns out that C prime, the electric based capacitance, is higher than C, the permittivity based capacitance, by up to 16 orders of magnitude. C prime can be, say, 10 to the 5 farads, with C being only 10 to the minus 11 farad. Okay. So the discharge time constant for this electric discharge is Rc prime. And the discharge energy is C prime V prime square divided by 2, oh, the good old half CV square. Okay? Uh, the, 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 this Rc time constant, a half CV square, is well known okay? uh, for permittivity-based capacitor. Uh, but here, we discovered that this is the case for the electric based capacitor, and it's experimentally shown for a variety of metals and carbons. Aha! This is, uh, this is a science that is much more simple than what I initially expected. Okay. The discharge time constant, calculated as Rc prime, is shown here for various metals and carbons, and the measured discharge time constant is shown here. Okay. And, and the two are pretty much jibe from the vast majority of these materials. 
um, and the uh, uh, exponential decrease you know, uh, uh, is shown here. The, the, this charge, okay, indeed, is is f this charge curve is simply uh, fitted with an expo exponential curve uh, uh, supporting uh, the, this uh, RC time constant idea. The discharge energy is calculated as half C prime V prime square, and it's also measured, and the two jipe for most of the materials. Um, now, another aspect is that the uh, um, permittivity, uh, not the electric uh, thing now, I'm, I'm considering the uh, permittivity, it increases with temperature, okay, a phenomenon known as positive pyro, uh, uh, pyro permittivity. And it turns out that the resistivity also increases with temperature. Okay? This is shown for graphite. Okay? Uh, so the dielectric behavior becomes stronger as the temperature increases. This is just mild heating from room temperature to 70 degrees C. Uh, um, uh, uh, and, and so if one increases the temperature, uh, the dielectric behavior is strengthened. And when can, uh, actually, the, even the electric gets uh, get more voltage. Uh, and so raising the temperature helps. Now, continuous carbon fibers are very important for lightweight structures, such as aircraft. Um, and we have looked at the carbon fibers without and with nickel coating. Uh, this is the cross-section of the nickel-coated carbon fiber. Um, and you can see that the permittivity is increased a lot uh, 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 by the uh, nickel coating. Uh, uh, the resistivity is decreased a lot. Uh, and uh, the fraction of carriers that participate in the electorate is, is decreased by the, uh, by the nickel coating because the metal coating has a lot of free carriers, uh, making the denominator big. Um, uh, but the discharge time constant per unit electric participating charge uh, is much decreased by the ni uh, nickel coating because of the uh, uh, nickel providing high, high conductivity, making the discharge faster. Uh, so, as I said, the uh, higher temperature helps the electric, not just helping the permittivity. Uh, and this shows the electric field uh, increasing with heating, again, up to only 70 degrees C. Uh, and this we, we call pyroelectric behavior. That means the carrier atom interaction is promoted by the heating. Uh, And so because of the heating and the promotion by it, the, the, uh, uh, if you increase the temperature from 23 to 70 degrees C, uh, you get uh, much increase in the electric field and also much increase in the power density, yeah, whether for uncoated fiber or nickel-coated fiber. Uh, note that the power density I talk about is the volumetric power density, which is the uh, which boils down to, the, to be the square of the electric field divided by the resistivity. So uh, the science of this whole thing in, uh, involves the charge carrier polarization, okay? the carriers inside the conductor uh, responsible for the polarization. And it manifests itself in three forms, the DC polarization, the AC polarization, as expressed by the permittivity and the DC electric. Uh, and uh, the, you have uh, piezo permittivity and pyro permittivity uh, in relation to the temperature and stress effect on the permittivity. You have the uh, piezo electric and pyro electric in relation to the effects of stress and temperature on the DC electric. And, and, and these effects of temperature and stress uh, allow uh, stress sensing and temperature sensing, as well as uh, energy harvesting. So the model is very, very simple. Simply capacitor discharge or charge 
but the capacitance is not the usual permittivity-based capacitance, but it's the electric-based capacitance, which is new. The discharge time increases with the inter-electrode distance, as one would expect. Um, uh, so the thermodynamics of the discharge or charge of the electorate uh, in, is that the discharge of the electorate involves entropy increase, whereas the charge involves enthalpy decrease. Uh, so the energy input is not needed. But the permittivity based capacitor, the discharge would involve entropy increase, whereas the charge would involve entropy decrease, so that energy in input is needed for charging. Now, getting energy from a structure uh, is uh, something that has uh, been in the minds of researchers for uh, maybe 20 years. Um, uh, structural battery, structural capacitor. In fact, I was um, a pioneer of that uh, back in 2001, um, uh, using uh, uh, structural materials such as carbon fiber polymer matrix composites uh, and modifying that through uh, the incorporation of device or device components uh, to, to make that uh, uh, composite be able to function as a battery or a capacitor. Okay. Uh, however, the problem is that the device incorporation weakens the structure and also the device life is much shorter than the required service life of the structure. However, what I'm talking about in here is not that. Uh, what I talk about here involves no device incorporation. There are issues with structures rendered self-powering by device embedment, inadequate service life, and inadequate safety for structural batteries and structural supercapacitors. Inadequate self-powering performance, in addition, in addi uh, inadequate mechanical performance, high cost, and the technology not applicable to existing structures, because existing structures would not have such modification. Okay. Uh, there are various energy sources, you know, coal, gas, oil, nuclear, hydro, uh, uh, that's the historical, and then we have solar, wind. Uh, 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 the solar and wind is in increasingly important. Um, the but they, uh, uh, solar or wind energy is generated intermittently, so energy storage is required. Okay? And that adds a lot to uh, the, the cost and the space requirement. But electric based energy generation involves continuous discharge charge cycling. Uh, uh, no, uh, uh, and, uh, and with the self charge. Uh, it just keeps on discharge, charge, discharge, charge. Uh, 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 you just have to uh, uh, change it from uh, short circuiting to open circuiting. Um, uh, and then different parts of a structure starts discharge at different times. So the energy is continuously provided. And you can have on-demand energy generation. And energy storage is not re needed. Uh, electric based energy generation, uh, as envisioned here, is just uh, uh, a promise, is not realized yet, involving large structures, because the, the larger it is, the more is the energy or voltage that can be provided. And it's a new untapped form of energy. It's clean with no greenhouse gas emission. I call this structural energy. Steel is a dominant construction material, and so I envision the possibility of using the steel in buildings uh, to pr provide structural energy, that is structural self-powering. Uh, there are, in a way, two energy applications. One is energy generation, which I just talked about, and that would benefit from fast discharge. The other is slow discharge situation, which would make possible the application as a power source. And now I'd like to talk about the second application, the power source application. 
um, it's a low voltage power source. And we found that uh, exfoliated graphite based flexible graphite is particularly good for that. With long discharge time exceeding 700 hours, and the discharge time can be further increased by adding a load resistor so that the RC prime time constant is increased. Uh, and the, the flexible graphite, you can see, ha has this microstructure with a lot of interfaces, uh, uh, both within and between the cell walls. And uh, I, I believe that microstructure is responsible for uh, the uh, long discharge time. Um, so I envision having the dielectric conductor acting as a power source uh, and a load resistor, R sub L. Uh, this is the flexible graphite commercially available, uh, a, a sheet, and I have uh, uh, two, the two outer electrical contacts in the form of aluminum foil and silver paint uh, connected to an external load resistor. Uh, uh, and then the two inner contacts uh, used for measuring the electric voltage. And we find that here, uh, um, the, the, uh, uh, we can, this is a standard resistor, so we can measure the, the voltage across that standard resistor, thereby obtaining the current through this whole thing. And we find that uh, it, it's all in accordance with Ohm's law. Okay? Uh, that is, the, the graphite simply uh, uh, drives the current through the load resistor in the circuit in accordance with Ohm's law. And we've tried different load resistances, uh, shown here, different load resistances, and they all jibe with Ohm's law. Okay. Um, the voltage causes current to pass through a series load resistance according to Ohm's law, but it's just microvolt and microamp. The voltage changes sign upon polarity reversal with the magnitude slightly smaller after the reversal. The electric field does not change upon series connection as expected. Now let's consider series connection. See each is in a way a power source, so we want to put them in series electrically so as to build up the voltage and that in, in fact can be done. But how do you connect them in series? That's the big question. Um, one way is to uh, have a butt joint so that by using silver paint, the two pieces are connected electrically at their proximate edges. Um, uh, and by, by, uh, so there's no bending in the connection. Um, and uh, and this, this is how it looks like. Uh, and the, and the result is that the, the, the voltage, the series voltage, is just the sum of the voltages of the two pieces. Um, but an, another way is uh, to connect the two pieces together using aluminum foil, uh, uh, which are uh, uh, attached to each, each sheet uh, and stick out. Uh, and we then use silver paint to join the two aluminum foil strips together, and the aluminum foil obviously curl around. Uh, um, and, and we use a double-sided adhesive tape uh, at, at this butt joint to, to make sure that the, the two pieces are not electrically connected at the joint, but connected electrically through the aluminum foil sticking out. Okay. Um, and we find that uh, th this is uh, that, th that situation. You can see that, that the aluminum foil sticks out and curls around. Okay? So, th th so uh, th this involves a lot of bending in the connection. Okay? Um, and uh, as shown here, the, uh, uh, when, when you have uh, uh, no bending uh, uh, in, in the connection, uh, the, the voltage you get the series voltage is just the sum of the two. Uh, but if you have bending, then it's a r roughly 50% of the sum. Okay, so have bending is not as good. You, you get about half of the sum. Okay, so this brings in the, the concept of polarization continuity. That is, if you have bending, it degrades 
the extent of dipole-dipole interaction uh, across that band, and uh, so it diminishes the polar polarization continuity, thereby decreasing the electric voltage. Okay. Um, and we've actually calculated the, the electrostatic forces involved between these plus and minuses, uh, and found that in, indeed uh, the uh, uh, um, the bending uh, uh, diminishes the attractive force, okay? uh, so that it becomes less and less attractive between the dipoles. That 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 is less and less dipole interaction. Uh, now, for non-conductors, it's a different ball game. Uh, di the dielectric testing involves this sandwiching approach. Uh, uh, and it requires a small thickness of the dielectric material uh, being sandwiched. Um, and so it's not possible to investigate dielectric continuity. It's just a very small thickness. Uh, um, also, the fringing field makes it not possible to investigate the effect of bending. Okay, so polarization continuity has not been previously uh, brought up, uh, whether for non-conductors or conductors. Now, um, the closest uh, uh, prior art in terms of energy generation is thermoelectric energy generation. Uh, because thermoelectric materials are also electronic conductors, but they require a temperature gradient. And there is a limited choice of materials due to the required high thermal power, high thermal conductivity, um, and low thermal conductivity, and low electrical resistivity. Uh, and because of that, uh, the limitation of materials, the materials that are good thermoelectric materials are non-structural materials. Okay. So in this work, I'm introducing a few new scientific concepts. Carrier atom interaction in conductive materials, polarization in conductive materials, and electrics in conductive materials. And this is a field in its infancy. Uh, 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 here is the conclusion. Uh, the electrodes in the form of electrical non-conductors, ceramics and polymers, have long been addressed. But this work addresses electrodes in the form of conductors, metals such as steel and carbons such as graphite. The electrode behavior of conductors stems from the carrier atom interaction. In contrast to non-conductive electrodes, conductive electrodes do not require poling, since the charge state is thermodynamically stable and allow continuous DC current to pass through. Upon short-circuiting, a conductive electrode discharges, with its voltage decreasing to zero. Upon subsequent open-circuiting, the electrode charges back, that is, self-charge. The discharge or charge is due to capacitor discharge and charge, with the capacitance being the electric based capacitance, which is the electric charge divided by the electric voltage. And this electric based capacitance is higher than the permittivity based capacitance by as much as 16 orders of magnitude. And this capacitor discharge notion is experimentally supported by the RC time constant for the discharge time and the half CV square for the discharge energy. In addition, uh, we have discovered the concept of polarization continuity, which negatively, uh, 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 which, which is negatively affected by bending the electrical connection between pieces of the conductor. The voltages scale uh, uh, by series connection, with the voltage doubled when the two essentially identical specimens are connected in series without connection bending. Uh, but the series voltage is approximately halved when the connection is bent. Uh, partial support of this work is from the US Air Force in relation to the electric vertical uh, takeoff and landing aircraft. Thank you.